So this is a very tough subject that I'm about to talk about. I'm going to talk about anger. And I'm going to talk about anger because it will destroy you. And I'm going to talk and give you guys a teaching that I did at at least three conferences uh, that I spoke at. And um, it's a pretty deep conversation because anger, I mean, I still struggle with it. I'm going to be completely honest. I love to talk about this because it makes me a better person every single day. I don't want to be angry anymore. I don't want to be angry at people, right? Uh, you're human. You have to do a self-examination of whether or not you can, you know, see yourself healing and being free from these things. But the spirit of anger, God is just not in the midst of that. Okay. And so as we talk about anger today, I'm actually going to share a little joke at the beginning today. Um, I love, this is kind of anger management 101 jokes. I, I love my, one of my spirit, my spiritual mentors and spiritual father, Dr. Randall Langley says that it's always good to make people laugh because laughter is good medicine. So it's the wife goes to the counselor and complaining about her husband's anger. And she explains that he seems to just flip out on her and lose his temper. The counselor makes a suggestion. Okay, here's what I want you to do. Anytime you feel like your husband is about to flip out, I want you to go to the kitchen, pour a glass of water, and then take a swig and swirl it around in your mouth until he calms down. The woman, the woman was puzzled, but in agreement, okay, I'll give it a try. Two weeks pass by, and she goes back to the counselor and says to the counselor, that suggestion of yours worked like a charm. Anytime my husband got angry, I just swirled the water around in my mouth, like you said, and he calmed down. How in the world does a glass of water do that? And the counselor replied, the water itself didn't do anything. I think you'll find that it's keeping your mouth shut that does the trick. <laughs> so I know a lot of you are not going to like, you women are not going to like that, but it could have been a man, vice versa, whatever, right? So when I said that we were going to talk about anger, Many of you that are going to listen to this, you immediately said, "Yep, yeah, that's me. I'm a person that deals with anger or someone came to your mind. A spouse, a father, mine came to my father. I got mine. Mine with my anger was an absolute generational curse. OK, my, as I said it, my father came to mind immediately. Maybe you, you know, maybe you instantly said, I don't have anger. I don't struggle with that, okay? A lot of times when you say that, you do struggle with that. Or maybe you just self-identified. You were like, you know, on the car ride here or, you know, yesterday morning or even this morning or, or yesterday, I got mad at my kid and I was yelling and screaming. It does absolutely no good, right? Um, I was yelling at my wife and kids. Some of you, you get it. Many, many of you will get it by the time I'm finished with this, all right? Some of us, we may never get it. I don't always get it right. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't always get it right. But now after going through this teaching now four or five times, I get it more than I did before. And, at, and, and after today, my prayer is, is that many of you, including myself, as I said, when we get through this, that you'll be free from anger. Some of us, as I said, you know, we may say, yeah, I have anger, but it's only because of my job or it's only because of how my wife talks to me. It's not my fault. So if my spouse would wash the dishes after I cook, I would not have anger issues. If my clients would listen to me the first time, I would deal with anger or even reject it. And, 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 and when this teaching was going on, um, one of the pastors you know, spoke on rejection and how rejection leads to anger, right? Um, if my wife didn't remind me to close the cabinet doors, I wouldn't get angry. Um, and as I'm doing these recordings, she's in the other room, so she's probably laughing, right? So here's the truth. Can we all just be honest enough today to say that maybe those things are symptoms of something that's going on deeper inside of us? Wow. Wow. OK, maybe that's the fruit of the root inside of what needs to be brought to the surface. 
Maybe there's something deep inside of you. You know, what I love about Ephesians 4 is, Paul, listen to this, Paul brings, uh, uh, Paul begins to talk to us about our anger. And he talks to us about the very root of anger. Okay. And here's what he says. In anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you're still angry. And don't give the devil a, a, a foothold. So in your anger, do not sin. I think there's a couple main principles in here that I can take away from this. First was um, we all deal with it. We all deal with it. We all deal with anger. Admit it. Look at yourself. If you're watching, say, that's me. Okay. Can there is there anybody that's watching? Maybe you put some comments down below that I don't ever get angry. And, and I would just say that you're probably lying. If so, then I want to hang out with you. If, if you can say that. Okay. I think we all have moments in our lives where we have some form of anger. Okay. I would say really that if you don't deal with it, you're probably suppressing it and it will come out sideways. We all deal with it. I'm just going to say it one more time. We all dis deal with anger. It's not necessarily sinful anger. As a matter of fact, God himself in his perfect nature and who he was, he dealt with anger. How many of you have questioned or said this at one time in your life? Is God mad at me? Being angry does not necessarily mean it's sinning. That's why it says in Ephesians, in your anger, do not sin. Okay? Because he assumes that there's going to be moments in your life that you're truly going to be angry. And I, I believe God knows us better than we know ourselves. So the second thing I, I see there in Ephesians is we all respond to it. Okay? It's not just about the fact that we deal with anger. It's how we respond to it. How we respond to any situation of anger in our life. You don't have to answer this out loud, but, but you know, think about it in your heart. And if you feel better answering it out loud, do it. Okay? It, close if you're able to. Now, if you're driving, don't do this. You know, close your eyes for a second with me and ask yourself this. How do you respond to anger? Do you come to conflict? Do you sit down and address it right away? Or do you leave it spewing the rest of the day or the rest of the night? Does it lead to passive aggressive behavior? Does it lead to aggressive behavior? I, in my family, it led to physical behavior. Okay, you can open your eyes. How we deal with our anger and how we respond to it really does matter. It just does, you guys. Because other people are watching us. Okay. It leads to if you if you've listened to my, you know, about how unforgiveness, you know, and that's part of anger, right? Your anger has potential to lead to sin. We all deal with it in different ways. We all respond to it different. But because of the potential, that's why we all need to address it. We all need to address the anger that we face at times, because Paul says it best, anger left unaddressed gives a foothold for the enemy. Guys, take that to heart today. The devil will use anger as a weapon in your life, in your marriage, in your kid's life, at your work, in your businesses. Trust me. Let me guess. You don't deal with anger because your family is perfect. <laughs> I remember when I said this the first time I taught it and I saw elbows going off, right? Okay. I've noticed this in my life. Anger that's been unaddressed has just produced more and more frustration. I now, and my wife could tell you this, I go right to her and say, I'm sorry, I don't let it fester up. You know, it's called the convicting power of the Holy Spirit. OK. I can tell you when I've had frustrating moments with someone else. And, and it can start with a misleading text. Do not texting will cause anger. They'll send me a text 
message, which most of the time is horrible communication, like I said. And you should really just pick up the phone and talk. I want to tell you a quick story of a guy. Um, and as my wife says, stop sweating the small things. Um, he had bought his son a, um, a, a kayak. And his son was kayaking out on the water. And um, his daughter had made this paper airplane. And she took the paper airplane. And as her brother was paddling his little boat, she took it and tried to throw it at him. And uh, this father got super angry and yelled and screamed at his daughter and made it and made her cry and as he sat on the end of the dock watching his son paddle the paper airplane came back to his feet and he reached down in the water and picked it up and he realized that that anger led to nothing good nothing except making his daughter cry and he went to his daughter and asked for forgiveness how often do you get mad over the small things and sometimes they're not small things okay here are some things that you can do start doing a self audit how something unaddressed in your life turns into something bigger telling you this will change your life as soon as there's hurt hearts and feelings you have attitudes towards each other i've seen it in my own life and so have you unaddressed anger leads in to bigger things what i love about this passage that we've been meditating on Paul addresses how we can address our anger later on in the chapter. It's found in Ephesians 4, 31 and 32. He says, get rid of all bitterness and rage and anger, along with every form of malice. Maybe you're asking yourself, Mike, what do I replace it with? He says, instead, of, instead be kind and compassionate to one another. Forgive each of us as God's forgiven you. Okay, it's hard. That person may go out of your life. You may not understand it. You may have not done anything wrong. You forgive and you move on. It's as though Paul in this 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 these chap these verses is saying when you understand how God loves you, it can transform anger towards others differently. God's love for us should train should transcend and transform how we view anger. If you understand it, you understand love, it will transform your anger towards others. How has God how has God responded to us? It says slow to anger, quick to forgive, full of compassion. That should cause us to respond to anger differently as well. God gave us an example of how we should respond. How has God addressed us? He paid the price himself so that we could be reconciled with him, forgiving us so that we could have unity with him again. How should we address anger when we think about that? God's love should always Always transform our anger. So if you're listening today, I want you to say a prayer with me. We are going to say a prayer of repentance together. And if you can read this with me, um, I will go slow so that you can repeat it. Heavenly Father, we repent of every place we've forgiven. Let me let me start over, okay? 
Heavenly Father, we repent for every place we've given in to the spirit of fear. Instead of loving, we have felt anger towards those who have hurt us. We forgive and release that anger now. We repent for believing the lies of the enemy. Immerse us now in your love and acceptance and help us to love and accept others, to be kind and compassionate to one another and to forgive each other just as Christ forgave us. Give us hope for the future and a new outlook on life. We thank you in advance for your miracles, signs, and wonders. You are an awesome God. Amen. Okay, one more thing we're going to do. We're now going to give a prayer of declaration together. Now, this is a little bit longer. Um, but I want you guys to really take this seriously. Okay. And I will put this in the notes so that you guys can print this off if you want, or you can go back and say it again on your own time. But I hope that you would walk through it with me. So um, we're going to pray this declaration over our lives. Okay. I have the mind of Christ. I take every thought captive and make it obedient to Christ. I put away all bitterness, wrath, and anger. I have the peace of God. I am quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. I rid myself of all anger, rage, malice, and obscene language. I know that might be hard for some of you. I am wise and under control. I use words of restraint. I am even tempered. I am filled with the fruits of the spirit, love, joy, and peace, patience, kindness, and goodness, and faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. God is my refuge. He is my deliverer. His mercies are new every day. His joy is my strength. His wings are my shelter. He heals my broken heart. He restores my soul. What I have sown in tears, I reap in joy. What the devil meant for evil, God turns for good. Jesus, I run to you. I trade this heaviness for joy unspeakable. I trade every burden for peace like a river. I have the mind of Christ. I am completely and lacking nothing. I am rooted and established in God's love. How wide how long, how high, how deep is his love for me? I wear a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the garment of praise instead of despair. I am alive. I take off the grave clothes and come forth. In Jesus' name, amen. Guys, thank you for saying that. Thank you for listening. I believe that if you listen to that and you say those words, you can be free from anger. I'm not saying that it won't ever, the devil won't try to use it against you, but you'll progressively get stronger and stronger. And then you can come back and you can share this with somebody else. You can listen to it again. This is probably my fifth or sixth time teaching it. So thanks for listening. I hope you'll subscribe. Take care.